And we have on the phone right now one of the few men who ever beat Muhammad Ali in a professional boxing match, Larry Holmes. Larry, thank you for joining us. I want to talk to you about that 1980s win where <laughs> he came out of retirement and you beat him. What was that moment like? It was terrible. That was one of the worst fights I'd ever had, you know, because being a sparring partner for four years, hanging with the guy, traveling with him, you know exactly what he can do and what he can't do. And I knew he couldn't beat me. And the only thing that I didn't want him to do is make me mad so I forget about who I'm fighting. Mm. And um, and he tried to make me mad <laughs> so that I could lose my my plans or whatever, but I, I kept my cool. And I didn't try to hurt him because I knew what he had. And uh, And after the fight, he was just as happy anyway. Mm. Was he really? I, After I, you defeated him, he was still happy? Yeah, because I said, man, he was making jokes. I went in there and I said, man, you know I love you, man. He said, well, why you beat me up then? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you pe know, people say, Larry, that he had this tactic called rope-a-dope, where he'd yeah. hang back on the ropes to wear yeah. out his opponent. Did he use yeah. that against you? Yeah, but I wouldn't let him use it. He tried to use it because every time he would go lay on the ropes, I was back off. Uh-huh. My phone have not stopped ringing. Hold on a second. People calling you to check in, huh, Larry? Uh, you know how many phone calls I had since 6 o'clock this morning from the paper, newspapers and... And you've known him well, Larry. That's why people are calling you. Talk to yeah. me about your relationship with him. Well, you know, I, I worked with him for four years as a spine partner. I traveled with him. I was in Vanilla with him. I was in Africa with him. I was, I was in Cleveland when he fought Chuck Webner. I mean, I was all over. I was in Deer Lake in 1970, 71. I mean, you know, I put the exhibition on with, with him in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. He gave me a black eye, first black eye I had in the boxing game. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't let nobody put no ice on it. I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot, you know, I got him to come to Eastern Pennsylvania in the bus with his kids in the school. And if, if the guy, you know, a good guy just don't do that. Larry, talk to me a little bit about his health. We know that we, it's believed that he, the Parkinson's he developed later in life had a lot to do with his boxing. Tell me about what you know about his health. I don't know nothing about his health. I know that he had Parkinson. I know that, um, you know, I think in between the boxing and, and the Parkinson, I think it all goes together, you know. I, I think if he didn't get hit as much as he did, I, I think maybe he could have more to fight off. I don't know. Larry, you know, I really believe in sports. It's not just a physical thing. It's very right. mental. It's what right. you think, what you're processing. Talk to me about Muhammad Ali and his mental well-being, about what he would think to get fired up to defeat an opponent. Well, Ali used to, went right before a fight, he'd be, in the, he'd be talking to himself, throwing punches, shadow boxing before the fight and say what are you going to do and how are you going to do it. And, and, and then they'd make a joke here and there and then come back to the seriousness. And uh, that's the way he did his thing, you know. We all, we all had uh, a way to put us into the mood that we have to go fight a guy that we don't really really know, <laughs> a guy that you, you, you won't have to fight to try to get him out of there. So we all come up with something, you know. And all he had his ways of doing things, and I wasn't in his dressing room too much when I was, when he was fighting. Guys, there was only a couple of times I was in his dressing room, and that's what he did. He shot a box, he got up, did some exercise, shot a box. Said, I'm hitting with this, I'm hitting with that. I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna do that. And he just going through it in his mind what he was gonna do. What was it like to beat? What was it like to be one in five people to actually beat Muhammad Ali? That the day of my boxing career, you know, when I had to beat my, beat my friend. I don't want to beat my friend. I know what my friend had and what he could do and what he couldn't do. And he was about at the last of his boxing, you know. But, you know, it's hard to turn down $10 million with somebody over from $10 million. I'm going to go get that $10 million. And, and he felt that he, he might be able to beat me. Maybe if I do something. And he wouldn't quit. You know, if they didn't stop the fight, he wouldn't have never quit. The man in Ali would have never let him quit. Mm. And that's the way he fought. And, that, and I asked the judge, the referees, to stop the fight. Stop the fight. What do you want me to do, kill a guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can show it to you on video. That I, those are the things that I said to him. And um, he, he wouldn't quit. 
the referee had to stop the fight. Ali was all man. I mean, he was no boy in him at all. And he loved the game of boxing. He loved to make people happy. And he was a champion to the day, to the to last night. And he's still a champion, as far as I'm concerned. Larry, a lot of people now in the sports world talk about football and the issue with concussions, soccer, mm -hmm. the issue with concussions. Do you think Muhammad Ali ever regretted that the toll that boxing took on his health? Do you think he would have done anything differently because of that? No. No, I don't think he would do nothing, nothing different. He would, he would still box, you know, because we all, we all think, well, it ain't going to happen to me. No football players go out there and play football and get hit and hit and hit, and they don't think anything's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Them, I had 69, I had 69 wins of my fights, and, and I lost six fights, so I had 75 fights. I had 75 fights. And I've been stopped by Mike Tyson. I've been hit by Ernie Shavers, one of the hardest punches in the world. And you, and you still will go on. If somebody come in and offer me enough money, I'll, I'll probably do it again at 66. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's what I did. That's what I do. Talk, you know? to, talk to me about his faith. His religion was hugely important to him. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what I see. I can't tell you what, because I don't really know his religion, but he prayed a lot. He's always prayed a lot, talk about Allah, and a lot. He did that. And it wasn't like I was with him all day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, with him, I'm with him for a half hour, 20 minutes, hour, something like that. If we're driving somewhere, you know, like when we drove to Cleveland, I think that was the longest I ever spent with him, seven hours on, on in a car. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and uh, in the bus, rather. And uh, that's it. That's the longest I... He was a man, Larry, who never backed down. He, he faced adversity. He looked it straight in the eye. It must have been so difficult for him to deal with the Parkinson's, the shaking of the hands that, that turned him into sort of a, 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 it was very difficult for him. What was it like for him as he struggled to deal with Parkinson's? I don't know his struggle. I can't tell you that. I don't know because I never had the Parkinson, but I can know that he tried not to have the Parkinson. I know he tried to do the thing that he was doing when he was well, you know, because I've seen him when he was well, and I've seen him with the Parkinson and, that's, and, that, and, and how, he was, how he talked to me, I can tell, you know. And um, I, he didn't like having what he had. But, you know, sometimes you, it just pops on you. And nothing you can do about it. And that's that will happen to him. But he didn't stop being Muhammad Ali. He still wanted to tell jokes. He still wanted to be, you know, make people happy. He would still give you an autograph. You he'll write it. And you might not understand what he's writing, but he would write an autograph for you. We were just looking at images of Muhammad Ali with, at the time in the 80s, Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. He had a huge worldwide impact. And even if you didn't follow or care about boxing, you knew who Muhammad Ali was. Well, that's what made him so great because his personality that he had. You can be a good fighter and, and call yourself a great fighter. But if you don't have no personality to go along with that, you ain't nothing. Ali had the personality. Ali could make you laugh, make you cry, and and because and because that's how what kind of guy he was. He had a good heart, and he treats you so good. You you know you can't you can't believe it. You know this guy's treated me like this. You know he, if if you was hungry, he would give you something to eat. He'd give you the shirt off his back. Larry you know? Holmes, Larry Holmes, one of five people who beat Muhammad Ali. He trained with him. Larry, thank you for your time. You're welcome. You take care. President Obama, Mrs. Obama, issuing a statement calling Muhammad Ali shook up the world, and the world is better for it.